So just tell me, James, why why is it wrong to eat meat in, in your opinion? Well, because it's completely unnecessary. So if we had to eat meat for survival, then that is a perfectly good argument that we could use. But because it's unnecessary, then that means it's unnecessary violence. Every single animal product, not just meat, it's meat, dairy, eggs, leather, products tested on animals, every animal product causes unnecessary suffering, violence, throat slitting is what we're talking about, gas chambers is what we're talking about, separating mothers from babies, the worst kinds of horror that you could ever think of. And so it's wrong because that doesn't need to happen. We don't need to put those innocent beings who feel pain and suffer just like us through so much horrific violence. We all agree that violence is wrong when it comes to humans and dogs and whales and dolphins. But what we need to do collectively is to extend that circle of compassion even further to pigs, cows, chickens, fish, to everybody. So that's why it's wrong to eat meat. Also, it's completely unsustainable. The leading cause of deforestation, species extinction, habitat loss, ocean dead zones, greenhouse gas emissions, it's all animal agriculture. That doesn't need to be a problem. We don't need to be in a climate crisis right now. And then on a personal level, when you do reconnect to having your compassion for all beings, and when you start eating plant-based foods which have no cholesterol, far less saturated fat, you have a far less chance of developing heart disease, the number one killer, cancers, diabetes, obesity, osteoporosis, there's countless benefits for the individual as well. So it just makes total sense, it's completely logical. There's no good reason in 2019 for somebody to still be consuming the flesh of a murdered being. What about, what about the farmers though, the millions of farmers who've been doing this for generations? Mm. I think they've got a good reason as to why they want to farm animals to feed a population that demand that food. Absolutely, and that's what we're trying to change, the demand. They're just feeling a demand. I don't see them as bad people at all. I don't see them as the enemy at all. They're just doing a job and to them they think they're doing a good thing. A lot of people believe they have to eat animal products. There's a lot of myths out there perpetuated by the very people who are trying to get us to buy their products. But those farmers, just like any unethical practice and animal farming is highly unethical. It is slavery. They're born into a life of slavery through rape. These animals are forcibly impregnated against their will. There's no consent. Their cage, I have semen injected into them and forced a pregnancy upon them. Their babies are taken from them when they're born. And then this life of they're either being fattened up to be slaughtered or they're being used as a milk slave, milked every, every day, re-impregnated every year, babies taken every year. The baby boys in the dairy industry are slaughtered because they don't produce um, dairy. Same in the egg industry, the little chicks are shredded up alive. And these farmers are just like any unethical practice, just like the slave trade. They're gonna have to find a better choice. And that's because the demand is gonna change. They're not gonna continue farming animals if people aren't buying them. So that's why we're focusing on the demand. I find it difficult though, James, how you describe these farming practices, which yeah. are done by people as rape. How you describe sure. farmers as murderers. Yeah, how, you I know, understand. I think, don't you think that, that you're alienating those people by calling them rapists and murderers? Look, I don't... If they ever were going to maybe consider what mm. you believe, calling them that, something that they've been doing for generations, mm. something that they've been told and, and believe that they're yes. feeding a population. I completely understand where you're coming from. That must be difficult for them. And, and you're comparing it to the slave trade. Yes. And maybe a community out there might feel like, you know, that's completely wrong as well. I understand. Even vegans may disagree. Some vegans would disagree. But you have to look at it from the victim's point of view. Look at what's happening to them. They're going into a slaughterhouse alive and they're coming out chopped up into pieces. They are animals. We are animals. If you wouldn't do it to a human, then you shouldn't do it to them. If we replaced humans in these factory farms and slaughterhouses, we would call it the Holocaust. If you put a human into these cages where these animals are forcibly impregnated, we would call it rape. And I don't think it's right in terms of, I don't, I don't think we should water down the truth of what is happening. These terms are accurate, they mean something. I would never say to a farmer, you're a bad person, you're a murderer, you're a rapist. That's not my approach. I would but say- you're describing their practice. The practice, like that. The practice but, but is that. that's what they do for a living and they've been doing it for sure, generations. But just, sure. just going on as well, like, you know, if, if your vegan movement is going to keep mm. going, because it is doing really well, you know, there's, thousands of people here enjoying a great day out but I, I i do feel that calling people a rapist calling people murderers and and using those that, that derogatory language is not going to keep this movement going it's, it's surely going to get to a point where they can't you know relate to anything you're saying because i think you're, that people you're can't describing that way. i'm sorry to interrupt you i'm just passionate about no, this no, no, i no. think that people can't relate because they don't see animals as deserving of those 
terms. And that's where I differ with those people. So when it comes to, we can disagree on whether using those terms is effective activism. We can have a conversation about that. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. A lot of vegans would disagree with me in regards to using those terms as well. But I don't believe that we can disagree on what the practices are. Those animals do not give consent to be forcibly impregnated. Those animals are going into a slaughterhouse against their will. They're being forced in there. They're being shot in the head and having their throats slit open. That is a murder in my opinion. Now in the dictionary, it would be called slaughter, but it's the exact same act. It is taking the life from someone against their will. So I don't believe in watering down the words. I believe that using the correct language is a powerful way to help people connect. And it might stir up a lot of emotion, and that's good because what is happening is so horrific. It happens to 8,000 million earthlings every day. We need to stir up emotion. We need to rattle people up and go, hey, what you're doing is very wrong, completely unnecessary. It needs to stop now. And if I have to use words like that, I don't want to. I don't want to make people feel bad, but I want this to end. And that's the right thing to do for the victim. So that's why I do use strong words. I don't always use strong words. I really try to do case by case basis. But when I have an opportunity to speak on the BBC, I'm going to take that opportunity to call it what it is. Okay. Tell me about the vegan camp out itself, the choice of venue. There has been a bit of controversy about the fact that this is the Newark showground. Yeah. It's, it runs uh, the majority of events to promote agriculture, livestock mm. farming, horse racing. Mm -hmm. So when you guys go, that's what this place is going to be doing after that. Do, yep. Does that sit right with you? I think it's an excellent opportunity to show an alternative of what we can do with this land. We can have a great festival, a big party where people be, can be educated on how to live a more ethical, healthy life. Um, it's also in this day when the world is not vegan, to always be a perfect vegan is next to impossible. Sometimes you have to do things that aren't 100% in alignment with your ethics because the world isn't set up for you to be 100% in alignment with your ethics. For example, the road that we drove here on probably has some sort of animal product in it. Does that mean vegans don't use the road? No, you've got to be practical. Being vegan isn't perfection, it's impossible. It's about causing the least amount of harm as practically possible. When it comes to this place, I think it's an excellent opportunity to show that, yeah, you can do all those things that exploit animals, but guess what? There's other options for you to make money with this land, to make it a lucrative business as well that don't involve harming other beings. Do you think though the farming community who have found the decision to have the vegan camp out here quite disturbing, do you think they've got a point though that you're on their home turf, a society that is supposed to promote agriculture and livestock farming and dairy farming is allowing vegans who have an anti-farming agenda on their turf. Do you, do you think they have a point? Oh, of course I do. I can understand why they're upset and if they didn't want to do it then they shouldn't have done it. So whoever chose to let this happen, you should talk to them about it. I'm sure a lot of farmers would have a problem with this and every vegan event ever. And so they should because we're bringing their operations to an end. That doesn't mean that I want farmers to suffer. I want replacements for them. I want them to farm other things. I want them to transition into other ethical businesses. It's not that I hate farmers, not at all. It's just that what they do is causing unnecessary violence and suffering, and that's what needs to end. It's not about the individual farmer, who's probably a great person who's just doing the traditional family job. No hate against farmers. You can hate the sin and love the sinner. Okay, great. That's brilliant. Cool. That was fascinating, James. Thank it's you. absolutely amazing to talk to you. I very much appreciate it. I feel it. really bad because this has gone really cold. No, this is ours. <laughs> Let's share it. But, be, be, I mean, you know, please go ahead and just tell me though, do you actually know? like completely what's in all this tofu cheese well it's vegan cheese olives are okay mm. this looks like tofu pesto it looks like cheese okay cheese okay. um i'll tell you yeah because i understand people are worried what is this fake meat yeah why 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 would you make the meat why would you make the vegan yeah. alternative look like meat there's a couple of there's a couple of eat meat? there's a couple of reasons the reason why i don't want to eat meat is not because i don't like the taste I love the taste of meat. I love the taste of cheese. I used to love eating eggs. I ate it for 26 years, every single meal, every single day. I didn't stop eating animal products because I don't like the taste anymore. I love the taste. I stopped it because I found out that we can live and thrive and get every essential nutrient we need on a plant-based diet. Therefore, I couldn't justify paying somebody to slit throats for me when I don't have to. The beauty of the vegan meat, two things. One, we can have all the flavors that we've all grown up with, all the textures. You can eat meat now and cheese without killing and all the other things to any innocent animals. 
And then on top of that, it's such a great way for people to transition. Literally, you go to the supermarket, instead of getting cow's milk, which is made for a baby cow, which went through so much suffering, you just go like that, you get soy milk, rice milk, almond milk, coconut milk. You want meat, get the vegan meat. It's right next door. It's so popular now, especially in the UK and, and um, Western countries. So my question would be, why wouldn't you just eat the plant-based option, which is also so much more sustainable for the planet and so much healthier. This has no cholesterol, has far less saturated fat, none of the hormones, none of the antibiotics. It has a higher, less amount of pesticides. The concentrated doses of pesticides are in the fat of the animals. This is such a healthier option that tastes the same, that looks the same. This is what I always dreamed of when I was a kid. Why can't the junk food be like taste so good but be healthy and that's what this is it's a healthier version with the same taste and texture of the unhealthy cruel unsustainable foods i think i think though you know you please tuck in but i think what's interesting is why why does meat taste so good then mm. if if we're not even supposed to eat i mean it? human beings are made of meat does that mean that we should eat well, i don't know if human beings taste we good, taste like pig the- we taste like pig does that is that a reason Rape would feel good to a race a rapist. Is that a good reason to go and rape somebody? Of course not. No, because your personal because your personal pleasure, your right to have personal pleasure stops when it starts invading somebody else's right to live in peace and body bodily autonomy. I think what's interesting though, and seems to be the biggest sticking point, is how Mm. you associate animals exactly the same like humans, and you call this suffering Mm. when animals are used for meat Mm. as suffering. You you call that suffering, and I think that's that seems to be the. That's a big sticking point. Let me explain. Human beings are one species of about six million animals, I believe. Maybe it's ten million. I slipped my mind right now. We're just another animal. There's nothing special about us. Just like pigs, cows, chickens, and fish, we all have a heart, we all have a brain, we all have eyes that we see with, a mouth, ears, nose, families. We communicate with each other with a sophisticated language. Pigs can say 80 different things with their mouth and their, and their body language. They're highly sophisticated, intelligent beings. They're different communities. They look a little different. They're made the same. The feeling of them getting stabbed in the throat is the same suffering as if someone stabs you in the throat. It's the same experience. They bleed the same as us. Their heart pounds the same as us. The terror in their eyes is the same as us. They respond exactly how we do because we're them. We are animals. We're just one species of millions. There's nothing special about us except that we've created a sophisticated society because we've got a sophisticated voice box that gave us the opportunity to create a very complicated language and that language passing on information from generation to generation this is what we've done it's amazing we're so clever in many ways we're the most intelligent in many ways they're more intelligent than us in different things you don't have to agree that a dog is equal to a human if there's a burning house you would probably always save the human unless it was somebody like Hitler then you might save your family dog but just because you might value them differently doesn't mean that their suffering doesn't matter That's exactly what white people did to black people. It's exactly what men do to women, have done and still do to women. And now it's exactly what the human species does to every other earthling. We're here, no one else's suffering matters. To the point that we're willing to chop them up into pieces and eat their corpses just because we like how they taste. It's for no necessity. I think Mm -hmm. I mentioned taste, but I think at the end of the day, we have been breeding animals and and livestock farming and Mm -hmm. dairy farming for generations to feed us as a population. You believe now that that we don't need to eat meat, but there are many people that believe, well, we should eat meat and we should eat dairy milk for a number of nutrients, mm. for vitamins, for proteins, and that's that's what people are. Yes, people I recall. Are I was that, yeah. I was a personal trainer for seven years, always believing that we needed to eat animal products to be healthy. The largest um, nutrition association in the world, the Academy of nu- uh, Nutri- the American Academy of Dietetics. Something like that. I forget actually what it's called right now because they've changed their name recently. Anyway, over 100,000 scientists, nutritionists, dietitians, they have studied, done a meta-analysis, studied all the studies that need to be studied. Their conclusion is every single human can thrive on a plant-based diet. You're likely to have less nutrient deficiencies. It is good for breastfeeding mothers, for athletes, for children, for the elderly, for your standard person, for everybody. Not only can you be healthy and thrive, you're likely to live longer and have less diseases. Okay. That's that's not my opinion. That is yeah. a fact. And we have thousands of vegans right here proving that fact. We're fit, we're strong, we're healthy. The world record holding strong man's a vegan. Mr. Universe of a few years ago is a vegan. World record holding ultra marathoner. 
UFC fighters, um, football players, you Legend. name it. Well, you know what, James? You know, you're a fascinating person to speak to, and you've definitely got a lot to say. And, and you're very clued up about the message that you want to put across. But I do feel that there may be a point where you will start to just alienate people by using perhaps some of the terms. I, that you I appreciate your opinion, and I know that you're right. I don't disagree. You are correct. I will alienate some people, and. Some people, I will also, that will be what inspires them. That's my approach, and other people don't use those words, and I respect their approach too. too. A lot of people tell me not to use those words. I respect that, I understand why, I appreciate that. But my opinion, after thinking about it long and hard, is that I don't want to water down the message. If it's rape, call it rape, and I believe it is. If it's murder, call it murder, and I believe it is. So for the victims, I don't believe the right thing for me to do is to water down those words. In saying that, I use them very carefully. I don't always say them. This is a great opportunity, I feel, to say how I really see it. But a lot of the time, I'm much more chill. I'm much more, um, you know, th that you don't always need to say it like that in order to get through to somebody. Sometimes the most strategic thing is not to do that. And I totally agree and I appreciate your feedback. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for speaking to you. I'm going to now actually have a slice yes. of this. Yes, have I'm a best one. Looking at it. Okay, hold on. Okay. Is it good? It's so good. <laughs> we'll have a go. Mmm, and the pesto is really nice. You have, you have your pesto one. You don't want the pesto No, food. I do, but I want you to enjoy vegan food. That's what this pesto <laughs> is, is all really about. It is good pizza. Yeah, it's yummy. And I wouldn't really notice the difference that that doesn't taste like me, if I'm being honest. You would never know. Since yeah, I've heard you about can tell it what you do it, so. so I'll just I mean, all up. you need to do is watch Slaughterhouse footage to see why I do it. I've, I've seen a lot of the videos. That's so why I do That's it. why I'm here. That's why we're here. You know, great, great. Here to kind of look at the message and, and obviously be balanced. Excellent. But yeah, great okay, to hear. I'll just